We'll see what they have planned as we're about to get into our first match. This is going to be the one everybody's eyes are on. The first one to start the day. And we have the Chen Pao and Gouging Flame starting off here. Chen Pao and Gouging Flame versus that Gallade and Ndidi. We could see that Psycho Cut come out. Could see that Sacred Sword into that Chen Pao slot. I mean, Chen Pao, Ice Dark, not, does not take those fighting type moves very effectively. Was, yeah. See what happens. It's looking like they're just going to try and nuke out this Ndidi. Oh, no. Now they're going to go for the Glade. A little bit of a reconsider right there. Oh, they're making yeah. some choices here. Maybe the Ndidi. Can I just try and take out this Ndidi? Make sure there's not a single <laughs> another Psychic Terrain reset coming out. But it's going to be a follow me. Maybe they even wanted this to happen here. As now, <laughs> it's looking like this Ndidi is about to fall right here. Yeah, I mean, but that's fine. Ndidi did a job. It got the Psychic Terrain up. It's getting giving Gallade the boost. I wonder what you switch into. Because you didn't get the Trick Room up. So if Ursaluna is in the back. Oh no, Gallade sets up the Trick Room. Interesting. I missed that. Gallade sets up the Trick Room here. So what do you, if you had to guess, looking at the team sheet, what do you think they're going to bring in here? I wouldn't be shocked if we see Ursaluna coming next here. Ursaluna going to love using that Trick Room. But would the Ursaluna be weak to this Chen Pao, though? It would be, be a weak, bit risky. But, if, but Chen Pao normally runs max speed. A Torkoal is oh. brought out here to try and counter the Chen Pao, I believe. Okay, I mean, that Torkoal got a really slow speed stat, so I don't, don't hate it. Going for that Burning Bulwark, that's Protect, but if Glade targets into that Gouging Fire slot, it's going to get burned. I think they're going to go for the Chen Pao because they just want to try and take down that high damage dealer and not try and go for a risk against this Burning Bulwark. Yeah, I totally agree with that play. The interesting thing here is with Psychic Terrain down, they can't, no priority moves can be used. Oh, that's interesting. So there's the Burning Bulwark. It is. Let's see how this turns out. We don't know. Silas chose to go up against here. There's the heat wave. That's going to do a lot to Glade there. Okay. And wow, Ooh, one HP gets it focus down to the focus ash. ash. There it is. Does he follow up? Does he do? Oh, oh the burn man! hits! That burn matters. If this is a sword dance, that's going to be huge. No, sacred it's a sacred sword. sword. Okay. You might as well. You weren't expecting the burn, so that's no, a good choice. might as well finish off the Chien Pao, but that could have been huge. That would have been huge, but you know, you can't bank it all on a single burn no, as much as you love to. Going to the Rillaboom here, <laughs> gets rid of that Psychic Terrain, sets up that Grassy Terrain, a little bit of healing here, and it's going to allow Rillaboom to use that Grassy Surge. Yeah, that Grassy Slide. I don't know how effective that's going to be against both of these Mons. It's going to be strong against the Torkoal, but they don't really have anything to really one-shot take out this Torkoal. No, but that Fake Out Pressure going to block Torkoal from doing any damage this turn. The question is, what can Gallade do? How can Gallade get that damage down? I think Gallade just needs to probably go for another Sacred Sword. I guess he could go for a Sword Stance potentially, but the Burning Ooh, Ball... Oh, something's Terra. It's the Terra Orb. What's it going to be? We don't, we'll find out it's in a second. Loading. It's not a complete crash as last time, but it's just going to be a little bit of a loading screen. My guess is we might see Terra... Flame Torkoal? No. It's a Fire Torkoal. Into the Torkoal. <laughs> A crit Torkoal does get fake out, so Torkoal can't do anything this turn. That's a huge fake out. Psychic Cut, I don't think that. No. Does a bit of damage, but not enough. Ooh, oh, and that flame. And crash. that heat crash does a ton of damage and knocks out Gallade. That's going to be rough for Silas now. They're down, I believe, two Mons. Yeah, so well, what's in the back here? That's the question. I w Wait, it's a nickname. Let's see what Ruby the Social. Ooh, oh, it's Armor Rouge. Rouge. Okay. Now, Armour really wants that Psychic Terrain up, but it does not have it. Sun is still up, though. Sun is still up, so we can hit hard with that Armour Cannon. It's got Power Herb. We can see Meteor Beam into the Gouging Fire here. That would be interesting. And the Gouging Fire isn't defending here. We're going to see a Terrestrialization come Ooh, out. Terra Fire, Rillaboom. That's going to be good. That's going to protect it against all these flame moves. And now, it's just all fire on the field after that Terra. <laughs> now... We do see that Olivia does have that uh, Wellspring Ogre Pond in the back, which is really not going to help either of these two fire types out here. <laughs> yeah, so even if Silas somehow breaks through this Rillaboom and the Gouging yeah. Fire, it's not going to be looking good. Going for the U-turn. So it is Terra. Terra, yeah, we got to wait for it to load. I think we saw that it was going to be Terra Gouging Fire. No, it's Terra Rillaboom yes. and the fire type. So just a total fire types across the board. No one 
really has any moves. It's going for that burning ball work again, trying to protect itself. There's the heat wave. Heat wave, not going to do a lot here. Only going to attack the Rillaboom, and the Rillaboom's a fire type now. And so let's see how much damage this does. I doubt it's going to do much at all, but that's okay. About damage. About 40%. There's the armor cannon. Let's see it. Also it's into the real enough. Oh! Seven HP, just barely just, not enough. Just barely hangs on. Now with a defense loss, that U-turn's gonna sting a little bit more than it should have. Yeah. And now they're gonna switch out to the water type. I mean, I don't know if that's a damage roll there, but if it is, oh. That is not looking good. No, Silas, Silas is definitely gonna have to do some work here to get get back in control. What do you do though? You have a Torkoal fire. And fire really is not the name of the game right now. No. I mean, Silas still has the Meteor Beam in hand with the Power Herb. He'll get a plus one on his Armor Rouge. That could be helpful here. Looks like we're seeing a swap out on the Gouge and Fire just to get him out of there and get that really boom back in. Yeah, it's... Is that to reset the Grassy Surge, potentially? Potentially, yeah. Right, uh, the interesting is. thing here is... You're going to lose like Rillaboom, because I, I would be shocked if that Torkoal doesn't Heat Wave here. It's a Heat Wave, but it's Spiky Shield. It's not going to do much, but so, it's still going to be protected. There it is. It's going to hit the Rillaboom. Yeah, you really just take out the Rillaboom there. I guess they are just looking to burn that, like a, like a faux substitute there with well, Rillaboom. Tri Trick Room might still be in effect. Actually, Trick Room, I think, is still in effect here. There's the Meteor Beam. But it's going to be Spiky Shielded out. Can get Spiky Shielded out, but he'll still get the plus one. There it is. That plus one matters. If Trick Room is still up, Silas may have found his way back into the game here. Potentially. I see. Is don't Glade know still how many alive? turns of Trick Room I don't room think Glade is still up. Glade got taken down, right? Yes, down Glade got knocked two. out. All right, there it is. Back. Fire. Here it is. That right. Protosynthesis now, because of the sunlight, is going to get that speed boost. Maybe a detriment here to Gouging Fire if Trick Room is still up. Go for that Ivy Cudgel. It's going to be hurt so bad, it's especially gonna hurt. after the Armor Blast. We have not much defense to block this. No, one. it's need to take out that Ogre Pond this turn. If Trick Room is still up, it is doable. Trick Room is not still up. I'm not sh quite sure. This is a nail biter right here. It all depends if it is. There's the howl. I don't, don't think, think Trick Room's room is up because the speed boost and the attack boost is. And Ogre be. Pond getting that. Howl is such a good move getting that double attack up. And there's the Ivy Culture. Look how much damage that did. That did a ton of damage. Absolutely brutal. And that is going. Can Torkoal do it alone? <laughs> is he Can't. choiced into Heat Wave? That's all we've seen him use. Torgal is choice in the heat wave. Oh no. Torgal does get the knockout though oh, on that's, Ogre Pond. It's pretty good. It's not all over yet. This Torkoal might be able to carry right here, but Just it's maybe, gonna but be tough. He's down oh. to a 1v1. Stalling out the grassy terrain here to get some recovery back. Not a bad choice. Bad choice. There's a heat wave, gets blocked out. How much PP does Heat Wave have? Because I feel like we've seen at least five Heat Waves come out. Heat Wave has quite a few. I don't remember off the top of my head. I feel like I it's around I want to say probably 16. 16, okay. So yeah, we're so not going to get <laughs> struggled out here. But no. there's the Heat Crash. Not a lot. a lot. I mean, Gouging Fire doesn't really have a better option here. That Heat Wave, not going to be doing much either, but it's, it's... Did a lot more than I thought it would do, because you're... Throwing Heat Wave into a Fire and a Dragon type. It is doing a decent job. The question is, who can win this stall battle? <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a War of Attrition right here. But that Grassy Train is gone now. Yeah, the stall's not going to be in the favor of Gouging Fire anymore. Storkle is a little bit healthier and a little bit more tankier, but it feels like it did a little bit more damage. That, that Heat time. Crash, yeah, that Heat Crash did a lot there. Now, it's getting down to the wire. I would give I it to the Torkoal, but oh. this is getting dicey. Yeah, I think that Torkoal has just enough damage output to maybe win this fight. That Terra Fire was really important. 
I think this is going to come down to PP. If he just has enough heat waves to win out this stall, he will be set. But if he runs out at any point, this is going to be di Ooh. disastrous. They're getting down to the wire. Okay, the this heat, heat wave, wave needs to hit. Here. Will this be it? A terrifier. Two oh, HP! Oh no! This is gonna be oh. disastrous. He's choice banded in. Will he live? No, he wow. will not. The Torkoal goes down. The fire types trading blows. What? That's gonna be Olivia taking the first game. What a damage roll there. Wow. You live on two. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you say about that? Do you you have to have that grassy terrain up. That's what got you to 2 HP. Yeah. You know, if you didn't have that stall, you would've been way lower. You would've been dead and gone, but props to Olivia for holding it out. Yeah, what a battle for our first battle of the day. And now, Zalas has to reconsider what he's throwing out here. What do you think he should do against this team that Olivia has brought in here? That's a good question. I wonder if you play the Ursa Luna Ursa Luna's pretty good. It's it's tanky. It's it can hit hard in, with guts. Does it have anything that can counter the fire on the side? It's got this. earthquake. It's got headlong rush. Those are both pretty good. Those are some good options. All right. Yeah. The and question is, what else does Silas bring? I think if you're leading Ursa Luna, you probably have, you're probably leading in DDF Ursa Luna, or you're leading. And DD, uh, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see the Lilligant this turn. Yeah, that the Lilligant could be good. It could be all right. You know, you don't want to go all in on the fire like you did last time. Of course, Torkoal did carry pretty hard there at the end. But, you know, you didn't really make good use of the sun, really. You didn't really get no. too much off of that. And and the issue is if that gouging fire uh, retreats, it comes back in with that sun up. It's getting its uh, protosynthesis off and getting that sun boost again. Yeah, do you think... Brooks can bring anything different in here, Silas Brooks. Ooh. Or do you think they should just run the same team once again to try and I think you I think victory? you try and switch it up, but I don't think you want to get too out of your comfort zone. You know Olivia was didn't bring the King Gambit, didn't bring the Chien Pao, so you know that. You know maybe it's a little bit safer to bring your psychic types and do more of that psychic push. But we'll see what change is made. Yeah, we'll see what the predictions are here. Once again, it looks like we're having a redo, but this time, Ogre Pond's going to be starting out on the side of Olivia. Yeah, I like that Ogre Pond out early. Ogre Pond is really able to pressure a lot of the fire types out here. Yeah, that's going to be rough. And We I think are we... seeing the Chien Pao from Olivia here. I think it's the same team, but just a little bit of a different rearrangement with leading Ogre Pond here. Yeah, we're seeing that Chien Pao in this game, which Chien Pao is interesting, hits really hard. I mean, we saw it last game, but it didn't get to do much. It died pretty quickly. It, it, it got a nice little crash off. He'll take out that Ndidi, but other than that, we didn't really see it pop off too much. No. And now, I think they're once again going to try and take out this Ndidi, but we see the terrestrialization. Early tear on who? That is the question for today. That's the question. I believe it is the... the oh, Terragrass oh. Armor. Oh, Ooh. that's interesting. Okay, trying to block damage from that Gouging Fire, but it's going to howl. Get that attack boost. That's pretty de devastating there. I think they're prepping for the Ivy Cudgel, but that's going to be going over to the Indeedee there. And wow. How does it knock out the Indeedee? I know Indeedee's bulky, but that is that is scary. That still did a lot of damage. Now Indeedee's on the ropes here. And there's the plus one Meteor Beam. Oh, Gouging Fire is going to take some damage here. I'm going to guess here. There yeah, it is. going to do a lot of damage into that Gouging Fire. Oh, oh a one-hit one knockout. Knock that's a lot of damage. And that's definitely Silas finding that rhythm now. There it is. That's definitely the setup that they were hoping for. And the Trick Room goes up for Ndidi. Now, on paper, Silas is in an amazing spot right now. Yeah, really good position. I mean, we'll see the... We'll see uh, Psychic Train go down and replace with Grassy Surge. So he loses that ability of Expanding Force, which isn't great. You love getting that Expanding Force onto both targets with Psychic Train. So I wonder if maybe he'll switch, uh, we'll see Silas switch out Olivia, or switch out, switch out Ndidi. That's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I don't think so. I think they're just playing this Ndidi to try and get the setup once, get what you want out of it, and then 
maybe try again, because having it in DD in the back line, once you bring it back out again, it's just going to be knocked right down. But there's the switch out. There's You're switch. correct. Good switch read. Out. He wants to, want, they want to get that psychic train back in. We are going into Gallade back out. That's the Gallade. All right. We're seeing a Terra. Is this going to be on the Reelaboom once again, or is this going to be Ogre Pond? I wouldn't be shocked to see the Ogre Pond turn Ogre Pond to a pure water type here. Oh, no. Terrifier Rillaboom. Is once again. I wonder why you'd run Terrifier other than type coverage. I mean, it gets rid of all your grass weaknesses, right? Because now instead. Oh, oh, 8 HP. That's a huge clutch live right there. And now Ruby is not looking too good. That armor rouge will be hit with a U turn. A lot of damage. A lot of damage. And they get the switch out as well. Now we're seeing Chen Pao going in here. This Interesting is... time to. Move into Chen Pao as you do have that Gallade with the Trick Room up. And Armorush can also hit with a Fire type move. Could hit with a Fire type move unless. That Ivy oh! Cudgel one shots! I mean, we have to remember. Uh, the Howl. Yeah, that Howl at the start of the game giving it that plus one. Gallade, not a super defensive Pokemon. Wow, I would just. I was not expecting that. I don't know. I thought they were going to try and finish out the armor rouge here. But no, Olivia, very confident in that Ivy Cudgel. Yeah, for good reason. Fun. We are seeing the Lunala, or the Ursa Luna. Shiny Ursa Luna, very fancy. Very fancy, but fanciness might not win it all for you right here. You're in a very tough situation. Thank the you. The question is, do you trick room, do you protect, try and get that guts on that Ursa Luna, or do you just go and try and remove something from the field instantly? Trick room is still up here. It's still up. So, there's a lot to consider here. This Armourish is at least going to have another turn to act. What is the move you select if you're going to use that Armourish? Do you try and swap it out? You have many options. You have the Indeedee still in tow, but... I think you're waiting for a switch out like this yeah. for Olivia. If you're going to bring the Indeedee back in, I think you would have put in Indeedee instead of Ursaluna. It doesn't make much sense here to replace Indeedee with Ursaluna. This turn. So there goes down the armor. Rouge. There it is. Now we're down to a 2v3. There's the Earthquake. Whoa! Big Earthquake. Big Earthquake does not remove anything from the field. It's going to be tough to deal with on the Reelaboom. I guess the grass coverage on the Reelaboom is going to be tough for this Ursaluna to deal with. We do get the guts up. Did not see Trick Room go down, and now the Indeedee comes back out. Now Indeedee still does have Follow Me, but in this Trick Room scenario, we could just see the expanding force, maybe Earthquake, and maybe the lack of care for moving the Indeedee themselves. Another switch out. This game is having a lot of switch outs back and forth, a lot of mind games at play. Gonna see that Ogre Pond come back into play to maybe tank a hit. This Chen Pao. Yeah. The protect on the Chen Pao, trying to keep that Chen Pao alive and trying to bait out those Trick Room turns. Because if Trick Room gets reset here, really Olivia's in a great position. Yeah, Olivia is in a good position. It's just risky. You don't want to lose any mods before this Trick Room goes down. There's a swap out into the Ogre Pond. Olivia's flicked expanding force that's going to take out the Ogre Pond for sure. See it. Will it follow, will me. follow me instead. Now, did Silas attack? The Sod comes yeah, out. No. Sod takes out the Ogre Pond. It's going to be a rough, but not an awful scenario as we only have one turn of Trick Room left, if I'm not mistaken. Now. And Rillaboom comes back in, removes that Psychic Train again, and now applies Fake Out Pressure. This is a very even last fight here. It's a 2v2. Both Mons, a little worse for wear. No one get that just yet. I think we are going to see the Fake Out come out, though, for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see that Fake Out. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Follow Me and something else. Does not go for the Follow Me. Gets the Fake Out off. No, follow me goes after fake out. Okay. Does he still get stunned from the fake out? He will still get stunned, and the sucker punch fails. And then wow. did not attack. And he flinched and couldn't move. That's a great turn for Olivia. That just stalled out the game. Just it one really turn did. longer. And have that grassy terrain back up, healing him back up. The burn. Well, it is good for the facade, it is whittling away at your HP. And now Trick, Trick Room is over. down. 
It's Going looking big like... Wood hammer. Yeah, this is... Icicle crash into Indeedy. This is looking like the finishing blow. There's Olivia the follow here. me. Who goes first? Is it Chien Pao or Rillaboom? It's going to be... There's the Chien Pao with the Icicle crash. Oh, Does okay. pick up the knockout. It's big middle there in the focus sash. And does Wood hammer pick up the knockout here? It, indeed, I believe it must with the grassy terrain. It should be good, it and there does. it is. And your winner for round one is Olivia. Props to Olivia. They played amazing all throughout. There were some great games there. That could have gone either way. Yeah, Brooks did not disappoint either. They played very, very well. They showed some great strategies overall. An amazing first game. It really came down that first game. It yeah, was a real great first game. 2 HP. <laughs> Brooks is one of our regulars here in Windsor, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see Brooks down the line and we see them play something else if we see them change up their strategy. Yeah, that was it. That was the 2-0. And what a first game to start. Yeah. Like you said, Brooks is a regular. We'll probably see them more and more often. But, you know, Olivia, we should look out for Olivia as well because they're the one that made it all the way through the set. Yeah, again, some great play plays by Olivia. Living on that 2 HP was <laughs> insane. That 2 HP, living with the gouging fire, getting that heat crash off. The stalling out the grassy terrain as well, I think it just enabled that 2 HP to even happen, right? Yeah. Because if you didn't have those little heals throughout, those heat waves would have just chipped you all the way down to nothing. Oh, for sure. And going forward, that Torkoal, we didn't see it in the second game, which is interesting because Torkoal really was the one that held out the longest, but maybe that was more of a detriment to Brooks' yeah. team. I mean, the Torkoal really doesn't, didn't do much into Olivia's team if they, didn't, if they weren't planning on bringing King Gambit, or, or they brought Chien Pao, but again, you have Glade to deal with Chien Pao, bunch of other Pokemon that just, Chien Pao is not a bulky Pokemon. Yeah, you no, know, not at all. That's why you run the Focus Sash, because you're just expecting that Chimp out to get one shot. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty frail. It does, but it does a lot of damage, and it's pretty fast. Um, especially with its ability. Again, the Sword of Ruin is very strong. But we'll see, we'll see where these players go. I will be excited if Olivia keeps going, and we see them, see them down the line in our top eight cut here. I'm excited, yeah. Potentially, we shall see that. Ooh, I'm... Just curious as to if we will see anything very different. Because that game, we, we've seen these metas before. Not to, not to disappoint everybody, yeah. anybody, or put anybody down. We've seen these mods. These are very popular mods and very good mods for good reason, right? If you're yeah. playing a win, you got to run some sort of meta, right? But I don't think this is the new cutting-edge meta. We haven't seen the Articuno, which everybody's talking about. No. <laughs> I think we'll see Gouging Fire a lot today. I think we might not see Gallade anymore, but... What else we saw was we didn't see Lilligant come out, but the Lilligant team there. I think mm -hmm. Lilligant, Lilligant and the Psychic Spam team has a lot of opportunities to change up its play style. Yeah, you definitely don't want to bring the Lilligant out when there's so many fire types on the field with these teams, potentially. No. Like, it's a little bit too much of a risk. Like, Lilligant could be strong, but I don't think it's worth potentially it being dead weight on the team. Yeah. Again, a hard matchup for Silas. They did their best, but we'll see what they do going forward. Yeah, so we'll see what happens in game two. We're going to throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right back with more Pokemon action.